Hi everyone, my name's Rosa and I'm from Ains Corp. We distribute salts products throughout Australia and New Zealand and I'm going to talk to you today about stoma care for healthcare professionals. So first of all, what is a stoma? A stoma is the result of a small opening being surgically created on the surface of the abdomen in order to divert the flow of faeces or urine. There are three different types. We've got two from the digestive system and one from the urinary system. And the digestive system's normal job is to absorb nutrients, water and salts from food. And the urinary system's normal job is to remove waste from the blood and dispose of urea. There are three different types of stomas. A colostomy, an ileostomy and a urostomy. A colostomy is formed by bringing part of the colon or large intestine to the surface of the abdomen. The output will depend on where exactly the stoma is along the large intestine. If it's towards the start, it might be more of a liquid output. If it's towards the end, it will be a more solid output because a lot more water will have been absorbed back into the body. An ileostomy is formed by bringing part of the ileum or small intestine to the surface of the abdomen and will be a more liquid output. A urostomy is formed by bypassing the bladder. So the ureters that normally take urine from kidney to the bladder are cut and joined to a piece of small intestine which is then brought through to the abdomen and forms the stoma. This way urine can flow from the kidneys through the ureters, through the little piece of small intestine, out through the stoma into a pouch. There are many reasons stomas are formed and these include colorectal cancer, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, diverticular disease, incontinence, trauma, radiation damage, congenital abnormalities, bladder cancer and interstitial cystitis and they're either a temporary or a permanent stoma. Depending on the type of stoma a patient has, they will potentially use a different stoma pouch. So for example, a majority of colostomates, which is patients with a stoma from their large intestine, will use a closed appliance. And this is because their output is usually much more solid and they'll change this pouch one to three times a day as it fills up. If the output's more liquid, as with an ileostomy, so someone with a stoma from the small intestine, or some colostomy patients as well, if their output is more liquid, they can use a drainable appliance as they're able to drain the output at the bottom of the bag as it fills up. And these can be changed every day or every two to three days depending on the output, cleanliness and patient preference. These drainable pouches must be emptied when they're one third to half full. Otherwise, when you're emptying it, you could cause a whole lot of spillage, which is going to be problematic for everyone. The pouches also come in a variety of sizes, mini, standard and large, to suit individuals' daily requirements. Obviously not everyone can use a mini all the time. For example, if they've got a very high output, mini bags probably won't be appropriate. All pouches also have a filter which aids in expelling gas from the bag. And gas buildup can be a problem and the bags may puff up quite a bit. This can be helped by potentially using a drainable appliance and opening the bottom of the bag to let the gas out. Or potentially if they're on a two-piece you might be able to burp the bag at the top to let that little bit of gas out and close it up again. All pouches must be checked regularly for how full they are, any leakage, ballooning, and are they still sticking correctly to the skin? So there are different types of pouches. As I mentioned, you can either have a one piece or a two piece pouch. And this depends on their stoma, their lifestyle and their preferences. And usually also if it's a temporary stoma or a permanent stoma as well. So for a two piece system, you've got your base plate, which sticks to the skin and this is changed two to three times a week. And then you've got your pouch, which sticks or clips onto that base plate, and that bag can be changed one to three times a day. So this way we're not having to take something off the skin a lot, we're just simply leaving the skin intact for a couple of days. This is great for people with fragile skin or excoriated or sore skin. Uh, we can just leave that in place and pull off the bag and put a new one on multiple times a day. Otherwise, you do just have a one-piece appliance, which can be just changed completely whenever it needs to be. 
So these are some of the different one piece and two piece appliances that you can get. These are all Salts branded ones, but there are plenty of different other ones from all the other companies around as well. So they won't look exactly like this, but they're all kind of the same thing. So everyone has one piece appliances, which are on the left. Um, you can see we've got closed bags, drainables, and this one here with the little triangle bottom is a urostomy bag with a tap on the back of it. You do also have two piece. So you can see here, this is not to be stuck to the skin, that little white ring. That is That needs to be stuck to one of these base plates down the bottom and then stuck together. So if you have a two piece bag, we cannot just stick the bag completely to the skin. It has to have a hydrocolloid base plate on there first and then we stick the bag to that or clip in the system depending on the product. So then we've got urostomy bags and urostomy bags will fill with urine and they have a tap at the bottom of the bag for drainage. These again need to be emptied when they're one third to half full. They can be changed once a day or according to patient preference, it might be two or three days and they can be one or two piece. Then overnight, obviously, we're not going to be able to get up and empty it every time it gets one third to half full. So they do connect to an overnight drainage bag and stoma patients get five of these a month. So these do need to be rinsed out and reused a couple of times before getting a new one. So the actual sticky bit of the pouch, the base plate, is an adhesive wafer called a hydrocolloid. And these are the most important things when you're managing your stoma because these protect the skin around your stoma. They're comprised of adhesive and absorptive components that are specifically suited for stoma care because they absorb any discharge that might potentially leak around the stoma. They protect the skin and they're gentle and flexible as well. We're not going to get potentially adhesive problems when we're removing them in the same place all the time. There are many different types of hydrocolloid, all with different compositions and additives. For example, all salts products have aloe vera in them to also keep that skin nice and hydrated and nice and cared for as well. They are a strong adhesive because they have to be, you know, if they fill up, they are quite heavy. So we need to make sure that that still sticks to the skin. So you need to be careful when you're removing them that you're not taking them off too fast. They need to be taken off nice and slowly and potentially also with an adhesive remover if necessary. So there are different types of bags. We've got flat bags and convex bags and this is the hydrocolloid bit that sticks to the skin. Convex bags are designed to curve in around the stoma. They put a little bit of pressure around the skin around the stoma to help make more of a spouted output into the bag. So we're hopefully getting a more spouted output into the bag and not getting any leakage potentially coming around the skin underneath the bag and causing problems. There are many different levels of convexity. You can have soft convexity, firm convexity. It all depends on how flush with the skin your stoma is or how recessed your stoma potentially is as well. But your stomal therapist will have designated the best convexity for the patient and if you think it needs to be reassessed it needs to be done by a stomal therapist because we need to be careful that if we increase convexity we're not going to cause any potential pressure injuries to that surrounding skin by getting a harder convex pressing on that skin. So all of this information is actually available on our website and it's much more detailed. I've just given you a quick run through. All you need to do is go to www.ainscorp.com.au, go to the ostomy section and then you've got patient education and we've got a book for each type of stoma, so a colostomy, ileostomy and neurostomy. And then we've also got a couple of other books in there, things like managing a hernia, managing diet, managing hydration, caring for your skin. So all the resources that you need are on there, including a whole bunch of application videos to help you if you get stuck. A really important factor we need to remember all the time is that peristomal skin, so the skin surrounding the stoma, should look like normal skin. 
and if it doesn't, it could be from a range of problems, things like excoriation or irritation caused by leakage or inappropriate products. It could be an allergy. It could be that we've got a mucosal separation of the skin from the stoma. It could be trauma from removing the pouch or cleaning too harshly around it. Like I said, we've got a very strong adhesive sticking to the skin. We need to take a lot of care when we remove it to not cause irritation or excoriation. The pouch might be left in place for too long, or we might have other diseases or conditions that are changing that quality of the skin, potentially making it more friable or fragile. For example, patients undergoing radiotherapy, their skin often um, changes and this can cause it to become much more fragile and we need to take extra care when we're removing those pouches and cleaning the surrounding skin. So some common stoma problems that are often seen are things like contact dermatitis, which is usually from leakage getting onto the skin and causing redness. And this is usually because any output from the stoma is not the same pH as what the skin likes, so it's going to cause some issues. You might also get a stoma in a crease, which can cause some problems because once we don't have a nice flat abdomen for the bag to stick to, um, it makes it a lot easier for leakage to get underneath the base plate and cause some problems like contact dermatitis. You might also get things like a parastomal hernia because we've already created a weakness in that abdomen wall by bringing the stoma through. So if you've got a weakness, some more intestines might want to push through there and push up against the skin and that's when you get that bulge that might be seen with a parastomal hernia. You may also see some allergies to the products which look like that big red ring there and if it's exactly the same size as your product it's probably a product allergy. You can also have other allergies as well. You might get things like a stoma prolapse which is when more of the stoma actually comes through the opening in the abdomen and this can cause some potential problems in terms of leakage, um, excoriation, it depends how the prolapse comes through. Some people have a prolapse and it's not a problem at all. You may also get things like mucocutaneous separation which is when where the stoma has been stitched into the skin, it actually comes apart and starts separating away from the stoma. This needs to be looked at by a stomal therapist. You might also get ulcers alongside of the stoma. Again, needs to be looked at and a dusky stoma where you can see that that's quite dark and quite black almost. And this indicates necrosis and needs to be looked at as soon as possible. So if the skin around the stoma doesn't look like normal skin and it starts looking a bit problematic like those pictures I was just showing you, we need to first identify the problem, explore the reasons, find a solution and choose a product potentially that's going to help us fix the problem. So it could be due to product sensitivity. We need to think, does that irritated area, is it exactly the same shape as my product that I've been using on the skin? Is it the same size? Because that's a likely culprit. Is the affected area itchy, red, broken, weeping? What is the actual issue? Have they changed their appliance or application routine recently? Do they have any allergies? Because like I said, the hydrocolloid is the base plate of everyone's products, but we all have different additives added into it. So maybe they're allergic to one of those additives. Does the appliance fit right? So have they gained weight or lost weight? Because this can affect how the base plate sticks to the abdomen. Have they developed a hernia? Because like you saw in that previous picture, it creates a big bulge in the stomach, which can make it hard for your normal appliance to fit normally. Have they had any other surgeries close to the stoma site that's affected how the product is fitting? Has the stoma changed shape? Is there a crease near the stoma site, like in that other picture as well? can potentially cause a whole lot of problems with leakage. Have they had a change in their output? Have they changed their diet or their food recently? Have they been traveling? Have they had chemo or radiation or are they taking any other medication? Have they had a change in the color or the appearance of the output? What is it? Is it potentially something that can be easily fixed like diet? Is it trauma to the skin or the stoma? Is the hole in the pouch the wrong size? This is a really important one that I'll be talking about further. Is the appliance comfortable or is it uncomfortable? We need to ask the patient. Have we been changing the product more often or less often than normal? Is the skin around the stoma hairy? Because this can affect how easy it is to stick the base plate to the skin. And is the stoma a dark red or purple, dusky kind of black color? And is it dry, hard and flat? 
like that picture I was talking about before. This is necrosis and needs to be looked at as soon as possible. When we've identified the problem, we need to fix it. So the best thing to do is to book an appointment with a stoma nurse when you're in doubt of what's going on or you're unsure of the management of the stoma. We need to use a gentle, regular changing technique. We need to wear the pouch for as long as instructed, not leaving it on for too long. And we need to be aware of the effect of medication or any other medical treatments on skin and on output. We need to constantly check the size of the stoma and the pouch regularly to make sure they're using the best option for their stoma. So really importantly, the two pictures on the right here, the top picture is what your stoma bag cutout should look like. It needs to be surrounding quite close to the stoma with no skin showing. As soon as you get like the second picture where you can see there's a ring of skin around the stoma before the pouch sits there, that's gonna cause potential area where the stoma could leak onto that skin and cause all those kind of problems we've just been talking about. We need to be mindful of food and drink that may affect output, such as rich or spicy foods. And we need to consider using accessories such as seals or flange extenders to support the appliance and to help give some security. Any serious issues like a dusky stoma or potentially stoma prolapse, um, especially dusky stoma, needs to be looked at straight away because it is indicating potential stomal necrosis. So there are lots of stoma accessories that we can use to help prevent any leakage, to help protect the skin, to help give the patient more security, make sure that they feel comfortable having that bag on their skin, that it's not going to move around or, you know, potentially come off. Um, there are things for smell, so deodorants. There are things to thicken up the output of the bag. And there are things to help aid in the removal of your bag as well. So we've got things like a seal, which is this hydrocolloid ring on the right here. These can be different thicknesses, they can be different sizes. So a thinner kind of ring would be more just for skin protection. If your skin's quite red and excoriated, it'll just protect the skin, but it won't help in terms of mopping up much leakage. If we've got a serious leakage problem, we need to look for a thicker seal because that's going to be able to absorb more of that output before it hopefully gets onto the skin. The thicker seals are also usually more moldable. So you can change the shape of them. You can tear them, put them back together. You can roll them up to put them in a crease if you need to, to create that flat abdomen surface. We can also do this by using stoma paste, which is again, exactly the same thing as your seals just in a paste form. So we can use these to fill gaps around the stoma or in creases and things like that as well. And then you've also got things like your flange extenders um, to help secure the outside of the bag. So this can be put around the edges of the bag if they're worried about certain areas coming off or if maybe they get a certain part of the bag that always has a bit of leakage, pop a little extender on and hopefully you can wear your bag for the normal amount of time. There are also things like stoma belts and stoma support wear. A belt, again, can just help keep the patch in place under people's clothes, help them feel a bit more secure. It can also help in terms of leakage to help make a little bit more of a spouted stoma because you've got that bag securely on your skin. There are things like support wear for patients that have hernias, but these need to be looked at with a stomal therapist's advice too. To remove the bag, there's um, adhesive removers. These come in wipes or a spray. You don't need to use a lot of the spray. You just spray it once around the edge. You need to wait about 10 seconds for it to actually do its job and then slowly peel it off the skin. You don't need to use heaps and heaps of it. It works really well with just a little bit of it. There are also things like barrier wipes, which are good if you've got a little bit of excoriated skin that needs to be protected. It will put a thin plastic film on that excoriated skin and just protect it a little bit. We do need to be careful though, because they are quite hard to get off. So you need to clean the skin really well in between uses. Otherwise, we're just going to build up layers on layers on layers of it. Um, but also, if you put a barrier wipe on, you're not getting all the great benefits of everything that's in the base plate. Like I mentioned, we have aloe vera. Once you put a barrier on the skin, all the good things in that base plate are not getting to the skin to help calm it down as well. So 
we use barrier wipes sparingly and usually with some advice from a stomal therapist. You do also have things like deodorant drops and, and lubricant drops. So potentially if the output's not falling into the bag as it needs to, you can have some lubricant drops. There are things like deodorant drops to just put a couple of drops in there if they're worried about odour as well. There are lots of different accessories that can be used if we start seeing things like, like I've mentioned before. So we're very lucky in Australia because we have a completely government funded scheme that is very generous. And all an ostomate has to do to access this scheme is to be a member of an ostomy association and they'll be joined to this association by a stomal therapy nurse prior to leaving their hospital. They get a certain product allowance each month, depending on the exact product, you get a different amount um, and there are different allowances for things like patches and seals and sprays, um, depending on the product. And what happens is all the associations contact the companies to buy a product, they put them all together in one package and ship them out to the ostomate, so the ostomate doesn't have to buy from each company separately. You can order more supplies um, through a stomal therapist if they prescribe more. If it's absolutely necessary, such as you've got certain medical conditions, that mean you're going through supplies a lot more quickly than normal. However, we do get a very generous allowance in Australia um, and you actually don't even have to order every month if you have an off product. You can order every month if you need to, but you do not have to if you already have enough to cover you for that month. There are some products that also require a prescription by a stomal therapy nurse prior to ordering. So to be a member of an association, there is a membership cost each year. This is around $50 to $60. There is a postage cost each month, or you can go and pick up the products from the association directly. And you will get a form to just fill in with all the product codes, which are on each box. And they're also on the company websites. They say how many items that you want and you can either email, fax or post these to the association and they'll get things organised for you and contact you if there's any issues or if they have any questions about the allowance of product. So thank you for listening to me today. I hope it was helpful. If you've got any more questions, the best places to go are the Ostomy Company websites. They're a great resource and they've got a lot of information there like I mentioned about ours earlier. We do also have an app, so it's a really great source of information. It's called the Salts Trainer app, and it's on the Google Play Store and the App Store. You can contact the patient's stomal therapy nurse, contact the Ostomy Association that they're actually a member of, um, and you can also contact the companies directly. So if they say had Salts products and you've got some questions about it, absolutely jump on our website, get the number for head office, and they'll be able to help with a lot of questions. And if you'd like some samples of products, potentially you think maybe they need a seal or they might need some remover spray, we're happy to often send out a couple of samples for you to try to see if they're the right thing. And then you can go and order them the next time you put an order through to the association. So thank you.